markets? Well, I think the uh, Brexit topic and uh, the cabinet meeting in London is at the moment something that is not influencing the market directly, but everybody is keeping a keen eye on everything Theresa May and her cabinet colleagues uh, are saying and are going to say on the Brexit issue. Uh, it's such a huge uh, issue uh, for Europe. I think probably the main uh, event one is looking forward to there uh, will be a decision, a ruling by the Supreme Court uh, in uh, Britain, uh, the highest court of the land, on whether Parliament will be allowed to have a say or will have to have a say uh, on Brexit and on the nature of Brexit. That will be upcoming and that will take some time uh, to play out. Uh, so I think it will continue to be an issue at the market, but uh, I think the major event is still a bit of a ways off. Different Donald Trump uh, that is having an effect on the market. I think everybody here was surprised to hear this uh, statement now uh, in a video message, basically uh, on YouTube, not a press conference. Uh, the future U.S. president saying in no uncertain terms, no free trade uh, with us and uh, with the Asian countries. Uh, I think most people here regret that. Uh, they don't see it as a wise move uh, for the United States either. Free trade, yeah, it has ups and downs for all parties concerned. But in general, it seemed to be by the market participants and the experts here to always be a positive decision in the long run. Um, and not, uh, not doing it is uh, basically, though, uh, in the cards because uh, Donald Trump has U.S. Congress behind him or will have U.S. Congress behind him uh, on this issue when, uh, when uh, uh, he takes office in January. Uh, still talking developments in Europe, we have Italy and Spain in the news regarding their current economic outlook. What are the key issues for Europe's biggest economies? Well, the key issue, I think, for uh, these big uh, European economies, for Spain, for example, is that uh, it uh, continue to have a stable government now and uh, be able to move on uh, with reforms, uh, which are so important. Spain has made uh, great progress in the past years since the crisis, but people don't see it quite out of the woods yet. Italy, perhaps moving into a crisis, people don't know, that is certainly uh, something people are having an eye on. At issue is a constitutional referendum uh, in the beginning of December. And uh, should that fail, it's a project of the current uh, Prime Minister of Italy, uh, that's uh, Matteo Renzi, then he says that uh, he will resign. It could be a government crisis. Uh, it could endanger reforms in the future, which Italy badly needs uh, from the point of view of the market. So uh, these are the main issues at the moment, and they're, they're very serious indeed. Now, media stocks are in the headlines uh, after the British government announced a $500 million boost to new fiber broadband, while Amazon announced it was looking into live sports streaming. Now, tell us more about this. Well, broadband is uh, important, of course, for uh, good communication and for, uh, let's say, moving along in technological leadership. Uh, you need that kind of uh, internet and that kind of uh, fiber um, uh, communications in order to catch up in R&D. And uh, Prime Minister Theresa May has said that she wants to invest a lot in, in R&D. This is part of that. Uh, I think from the point of view of the markets, it's, seeing, it's being seen as an important step, but probably not the most major one that the government will take. Thank you so much, Ulrich Bath, DWTV financial correspondent reporting from Frankfurt. In Asia, Japanese shares turned positive on Tuesday after damage from an earthquake appeared moderate. Most other Asian markets rallied as the dollar retreated. The benchmark... Nikkei 225 closed up 0.31% at 18,162.94. Extending Monday's gains, the topics index gained 0.32% to 1,447.5. Shares also benefited from a weaker yen, which traded at 111.03 before the close of the session. In Tuesday's early hours, a magnitude 6.9 quake struck off the coast of Fukushima and a 60 centimeter tsunami was observed at Fukushima's Onahama port and the 90 centimeter tsunami seen at Suma soon after the quake.
Okay, let's uh, quickly take you to uh, the commodities market uh, back home where we're seeing uh, the third quarter of GDP in Nigeria sinking further to negative 2.24%. And how is this affecting the commodities market just as the Monetary Policy Committee is set to announce uh, the outcome of its meeting, making hard choices, and that uh, could give a direction for growth in the economy. Adam Okwesa is a research analyst with the Financial Derivatives Company Limited and joins us from Lagos. Adam, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you, Bologi. Now, talk to us about the latest GDP numbers as they relate to the commodities market. Well, I think a deeper contraction was expected, considering that the attacks on, the, on all infrastructure heightened in Q3, 16. And yes, you can say that the unknown all sector, agricultural, agricultural sector, through salt minerals, through, and I'm sure the government will use that as evidence that there's progress towards diversifying the economy. But the fact is that our source of foreign exchange earnings has is still not diversified. All is still still accounts for 90 to 95 percent of our earnings of our forex earnings. So as long as that is not addressed, we can we should expect further contractions in Q4. Now let's talk about the agri commodities in details. We're getting very close to the festive period. We're just uh, a few weeks away uh, from the Christmas holiday. How are consumers viewing the prices of food items in the markets? Well, it's about six weeks, six weeks to Christmas. Normally, around this time of the year, we should commodity prices should increase because of the festive period. But because there's lower household demand, lower household expenditure, I think commodity prices wouldn't increase as much as what we have seen in previous years. So I think it would be actually good on that note for consumers that prices wouldn't significantly increase this time around. All right, thank you so much, Adam Okwesa. I have to let you go at this time. Thank you, a research analyst with the Financial Derivatives Company Limited. We'll go on a break now. I'll be right back.